Hi everyone, Happy New Year. It's early January 2023 and I'm starting the year with something a little bit different for this channel. I'm not doing a bread video today as you probably are already aware. Today I'm sharing with you how I make tofu. I have been working on uh, a process for a little while now and refining my process to make it easy, to make it as easy and straightforward as you possibly can make it. I've been doing lots of reading and research. There's lots of different traditions of tofu making around the world, most notably in China and Japan. Um, and this is a bit of a blend of all of the things that I've tried. I'm sharing this on the channel because I shared it to my social media pages recently, to Facebook and Instagram, and I was quite surprised how many people were interested to see how this is done. So I thought I would share it with you all. And I have put a few other non-bread recipes and things on this channel. So I'm just going to keep adding those things when, when they come up and when I feel like it's worthwhile sharing them. So I hope the bread people don't mind. So I'll just run through what you're going to need to make your own tofu. First and foremost, you need soybeans. You need the best quality dried soybeans you can get. These come from Slater Farms in northern New South Wales and I'm so grateful. These are brought to Brisbane by Sovereign Foods in Maruka. If there are any locals, you can get all your grains and beans and legumes from there. They're fantastic quality. These are grown biodynamically, so they're, they're the best quality soybeans you can get, I think, in this country. And they yield a very good yield in the tofu. These are Hayman variety soybeans I found out recently from Tor from Sovereign Foods. Thank you, Tor, for that piece of information. That was handy. So these are the soybeans I'm going to use to make the tofu today. They've been soaked for 24 hours, but because it's quite hot weather here, it's summertime, um, I've had them in the fridge since last night. You don't want to leave them out too long in hot weather um, because they will start to ferment and you do not want that, but they do need to be very well soaked. And I'll show you a little tip so that you can know exactly how to tell when your beans are perfectly soaked. Um, you'll also need some water to blend with the beans to, um, make the soy pulp and a blender is really handy for that. You will need a couple of colanders, uh, a, a large one to strain out the pulp from the, the soy milk and a smaller one to, to use. We're going to line it with a little bit of cloth and that's going to make the form for the finished tofu. So a couple of colanders, they don't have to be plastic. These are just the ones that I have. You will need a pot because we're going to cook it. We need to cook our soy milk once it's strained and you will also need a coagulant. So tofu making is a little bit like cheese making in a way that the milk, so we're making soy milk really out of these beans, um, and the milk is cooked, and once the milk is cooked and it's nice and hot, we add a coagulant, and in this case I'm using gypsum, which is also known as calcium sulfate. This is food grade gypsum from the home brew shop. And when you add that to the milk, it separates it. So it separates the curds from the whey and you end up with this nice bean curd, which we then scoop out and then we press it down and it becomes tofu. So you do need a coagulant. You can also use uh, lemon juice and vinegar. So you can, you can use acidic coagulants, but I prefer the flavor of the traditional um, calcium sulfate gypsum. And it does actually increase a bit the calcium in the finished product as well, which is great. You will also need a slotted spoon or a skimmer of some sort to be able to lift the curds out of the mixture. And something uh, heat proof, this is a silicon egg flip, uh, with a bit of a flat edge so that you can stir your milk um, and you need to stir it a fair bit so that it doesn't stick to the bottom. So something like that to stir your milk with is really handy as well. Uh, a couple of cloths, you'll need one for straining the milk and one for forming it. You could probably just get away with one if you want to. You know, a nut milk bag or some sort of cloth like that. Even a really large hanky or something like that would be good or a bandana or an old tea towel something that you can use to strain out the liquid from your tofu and the milk. To start off this process, take one cup of beans, dried soybeans. You can pick out any yucky looking ones uh, if you want to, but I tend to leave it till the end. Sometimes they are a different color. They might still be okay though, so I tend to leave them till they're soaked and then I pick out any bad looking ones um, at the end. 
Just give them a bit of a rinse. That was a metric cup, by the way. And then once they're rinsed, just um, fill up the bowl with lots of water. These will expand quite a lot. You can see the size difference here. Oh, my hands are clean, so I'm just going to use this to show you. This is the unsoaked beans. Oop. And this is the soaked beans. See how different they are? They're really massive. They start off quite round and then they plump up to these big, nice bean shaped beans. Set these aside somewhere not too warm to soak for at least overnight. In winter time they will take longer, in summer time they will um, not need as long and in summer time I change the water a couple of times to make sure that the water is fresh and they don't start fermenting on you. Once your beans are soaked and they're looking really plump this is what you do to test to see if they're ready and this is important to make sure you get a really high yield. Take a bean and then split it open and I don't know if you can see but see how inside it's completely flat there's no dark bits it's completely hydrated if that wasn't completely hydrated there would be a, a darker uh, concave little section in the in the middle but these are completely soaked they're completely uniform texture all throughout and it's nice and white and creamy so that's perfectly soaked if you run out of time and you don't get time to make your tofu you can put your soaked beans change the water, put them in fresh water and put them in the fridge and they can keep there for a couple of days until you're ready. So once they're soaked, give them a drain out, strain off that soaking water and um, I like to give them a rinse and pick out any not so nice looking ones. That one's okay. Sometimes they've got a like a purpley coloured skin but underneath they're okay so don't throw them out if they look like that because they might be perfectly fine. You'll be able to see the obvious bad ones once they're soaked. So they all look good. Just give them a bit of a rinse off. And they are ready to blend. Just put them into your blender. I've got this big um, awesome fruity blender. I've got a link for these below in the description box if you're interested in checking them out. Um, any blender will do. If you've got a smaller blender you might need to just do it half at a time. And then I have in this jug two litres of water. So for every one cup of beans you need eight cups or, or two litres of water. Um, that's all in metric. So what we do then is just pour in nearly all of the water. I don't measure it. I tend to just leave a little bit left in the jug. I just leave a bit left in here to rinse out the blender jug and then put the lid on. Oh, I'm too short to put the lid on with it up there. <laughs> and then I put my earmuffs on because I hate loud noises. Um, but I blend this on high for roughly about a minute. In some traditions, this bean mixture is cooked before the pulp is strained out, but I find it a lot easier and it totally takes out one whole step of the process and it's a legitimate way to do it. I think this is more the Chinese tradition, is to uh, strain it cold and then just cook the milk after it's strained. It's a lot easier to, and faster to strain the, the bean mixture when it's cold rather than when it's hot. And it doesn't seem to make any difference. I've tried it both ways. So I'm using this polyester voil, which is fantastic for straining milks, but obviously you can't use that type of material for a hot cooked mixture. So you just pour that in. You'll notice it's extremely frothy. So I've got my colander over my pot here and my double layer of, of the voil cloth in there and I pour as much as I can in. I can hear it trickling through the bottom. If you use a big colander over your big pot uh, you will save a lot of time if you've got your equipment the right size and that's half the trick is just 
getting everything that fits so you're not doing everything in two or three lots of batches you're just doing it all in one go so I just get my silicon spoon and just scrape that down a little bit to help it go through pour the rest of your water in there so it's two liters of water in total give that a bit of a shake up and then pour that in as well Once you've got that all in, you can pick up the corner of your cloth and just strain it out. Obviously, you just want to make sure your hands and everything are nice and clean. Having the colander over the pot makes it really easy. This part of the process used to always annoy me, but I found it's a lot easier when you've got cold milk. <laughs> you can just do it straight away. You don't have to wait for it to cool down. And getting the right cloth makes a massive difference. I had to try out different types of cloth until I found one that strained really well um, and was really nice and strong. Um, so it only takes a minute now to strain and I'm done. I love it. So now I have got my raw soy milk that is very frothy and it smells very beany at this stage but we're going to cook it now. And you're also left with the okara. This is called okara or okara. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. Um, but it's basically the, the fibre. It's very high in fibre and protein. It feels a little bit like Play-Doh. This is the pulp that's left over. And I'm gonna show you in a future video how you can make uh, bread with this. You, so you don't need to waste this. This is raw, it does need to be cooked, so you have to cook with it. You can look up recipes for patties and burgers and all sorts of things. But um, I've been putting it in my whole grain sourdough bread recipes, so I will be showing you what to do with that in a future video. But if you don't want to use it for cooking, you can just put it into your compost if, if you have that as well. The next step is to cook the soy milk. And I am all for doing things the quickest and easiest way using the most sort of efficient method. So I put my heat on high. This is an induction stovetop. Uh, I find this goes pretty well as long as I stir it very frequently with my egg flip here, nothing sticks to the bottom. You do have to watch it though, because it will boil and froth up once it gets hot. And you're gonna see that, so I'll show you what I mean. But if you have the heat down lower, it takes a lot longer, which is more time stirring. I would rather have it on really high heat and stir it constantly and have it all be done, you know, in five minutes or so, rather than 20 minutes of <laughs> stirring it less often and, you know, going back and forth. So we just stir and cook on high until it boils basically and starts really frothing up. Makes about a pound of tofu this, this recipe, which is perfect amount for a couple of people. And it keeps really well in the fridge too if you change the water regularly. I'll scoop this froth off just so you can see the milk. It does look better when you can see the milk. I don't know what it is about this, but I find it very relaxing and um, it's not hard and it's very satisfying. It doesn't take long to do and the result's pretty incredible. Okay, so you can see that the soy milk is boiling now. You gotta watch it like a hawk. See how it's rising and turn the whoops <laughs> turn the heat off straight away and if you can't do that if you've got an electric hot plate you'll have to remove it from the heat because it will boil over and that's why you need to stir it and watch it the whole time but that took about I think it was about eight minutes to, to boil so once it's done that boiling up rising thing you will smell the difference you will smell the milk doesn't have that weird bitter beanie smell anymore it has a bit of a sweet 
nice, fresh, nutty soy milk smell. I actually love drinking it like this once it's been cooked. It's beautiful with a little bit of sugar added. Oh, yum, it's so good. Um, so what I do now, is I've just got the heat turned down to six. Um, but remember, induction stoves, they react instantly. So if you've got an electric hot plate, just be careful. It might take a while to come down and you might need to remove it off. Otherwise, it'll boil over. So what we do then is I just cook it for a few more minutes on medium heat just to make sure it's really, really well cooked. And while that's happening, I get my coagulant ready. To prepare the coagulant, you just need a cup of water. It doesn't have to be precise, about 250 mils. And you need a teaspoon and a half of either your calcium sulfate or your magnesium chloride. I will put all the details for those alternatives in the description box below the video. Um, but if you're using calcium sulfate, just a teaspoon and a half in some water and it will make a milky liquid and you'll have to keep sort of stirring it before you use it because it all sinks to the bottom. And when you are ready, once your soy milk is cooked, and it is still hot, give it a really good stir so that it's moving around a little bit. Give your coagulant mixture a really good stir, especially with this calcium one, because it sinks to the bottom. And then you wanna pour about a third of this mixture. You don't have to measure it, but just stir it before you pour, and then pour about a third of that into the hot soy milk, just gently around in the pot. Roughly about a third, oh, a little bit more. And then get your spoon. You don't want to stir this too much, but give it a couple of gentle stirs, just up and down to mix the coagulant through and then stop. You don't want to over mix it. And then Put the lid on your pot and wait. Just wait for about three minutes. Just a little interlude here. This is the next day and I'm actually making tofu with extra beans that I rinsed and um, soaked to show you in the video. And I poured all of the coagulant mixture in all in one go and I used hot water for the coagulant mixture Poured it all in, gave it a bit of a stir and then left it for about 10 minutes while I went and cleaned up my blender and it's beautifully coagulated. So that's a really nice tip. I had been wanting to try that. I should have tried that first, but it works. So you can just pour all of your coagulant in in one go if you like. And these are my lovely curds for this second batch. They look just as good as they did yesterday when I poured the coagulant in in three goes and the tofu is ready. See how there's a nice separation there between the curds and the whey. The whey is not milky, it's translucent. It's kind of got a creamy, funny, yellowy, watery color, but you can see through it. If that watery stuff looks milky at all, it's not fully coagulated. You need to give it a bit more time. Sometimes if your weather is a bit cool and it cools down a bit, um, you can add a little bit more gentle heat and that might help to coagulate it, but just a little bit of extra gentle heat is all you need. I'll just show you what it looks like. These are the beautiful tofu curds. We'll take that over to the sink now and we'll put it in our mold and we're going to have tofu in about half an hour, an hour's time. It'll be done. I find it easiest just to do this over my sink so it can drain freely, but you can do it over a big bowl too. If you're doing it over your sink, just make sure you've cleaned everything out really well first. You don't want to be doing this over a grimy sink. So I just got my cotton cloth now. So we'd, this is very hot mixture. The tofu is very hot. So you need a cotton cloth or some other natural fiber cloth, an old linen tea towel, something like that, that will um, allow you to drain the tofu and form it. Uh, you can buy tofu molds and 
all sorts of fancy tofu equipment, but I really just wanted to show you how can, you can do it with a colander, so you don't need any fancy equipment. And all you do then is scoop your curds into the mold. Doesn't that look good? <laughs> Not really. So you just scoop those in. I try not to disrupt the, the curds too much. I think it gives you a nice texture that way. But you don't have to be too precious about it. Just get it in the mold. I think I've got a good yield out of this batch. Amazing yield. Just to think that all of this came out of one cup of soybeans. Incredible. If you like tofu, you're really going to enjoy the smell of this. It's a very aromatic experience. Once I'm nearly at the end, I just strain it through this little fine strainer. And there's my pot. It's not too hard to wash up. Just wash your pot up straight away. Don't let that sit and dry or it will be much harder to wash off. It's very easy to clean at that point. And pull that on the top. And there you go. Now for this part, this is why you don't want a really big cloth. You just want to fold the cloth over, sort of pull it up a little bit at the sides if you can. It's going to be very, very hot, so be careful. And then fold it up kind of as neatly as you can. If you pull those sides in a little bit, you'll get a, a slightly better shape. But don't worry, you know, you're not making it for a restaurant. You're making it for yourself. I quite like the round shape, but um, in the end, the shape will just be pretty nice, no matter what you do. All right, and then I use this one liter jar, which holds a liter of water, so that's a kilogram of water. I like a fairly heavy weight because I want my tofu fairly firm. I just put that on the top and I leave it for, some people would say 20 minutes. I like to actually leave mine a bit longer, about half an hour, even up to 45 minutes or even an hour. Um, I use tofu a lot in soups, like in noodle soup and things like that. So I like it to be reasonably f firm and make sure it's not gonna fall apart on me. Um, but basically you can press it as long as you want depending on how firm you want it and what you're going to do with it. It has been 45 minutes. What you want to do now is just unmold it carefully. Um, the tofu, the fresh tofu does firm up once it's been refrigerated for a while. Just unwrap your tofu very gently. Look at that. Ah, I love that. So good. And then just gently pop it into a container that it fits into. Ugh. And then all you need to do is top it up with some fresh water. You can give it a little rinse off if you want to. And it's ready to cook. You can slice it up, you can fry it, you can put it in soups. It's ready to eat now. But if you want to store it, you have to store it under water like that. It has to be completely submerged, otherwise it won't keep very well. So cover it completely, keep it in the fridge. This tofu, fresh tofu, people will say, oh, it needs to be eaten within a couple of days. It keeps. If you refresh the water every time you use it, so every day or every other day, it will keep for a really long time at least about seven days if you refresh the water. So every time you cut some off, just tip out the old water, pour in new water, put it back in the fridge and make sure it's completely submerged and it will keep really, really well. So that's it everyone. That is how you make tofu. Uh, there are other methods that you can use to make silken tofu, uh, different types of tofu, but this is a great way to make a nice um, medium to firm tofu which is fantastic for frying and sort of general purpose use. We put ours in soup a lot, in noodle soup, it's one of my favourite things to eat. 
Uh, it's absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this. And if you'd like more information about what I'm doing or other videos, please head to the description box below the video. Take good care of yourselves and I'll see you again in the next video. Bye.